Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here. Um, yeah, I know it's a challenge um, so short after, shortly after the, um, the break, the lunch break, yeah, to, to listen to a talk and uh, hopefully uh, I'm going to manage that you will find some very interesting, hopefully interesting aspects of uh, our vision, of the vision of the team and me, how to explore new ways of publishing or communication in science, in research. And um, as, yeah, in the, during the lunch break, we had a very interesting discussion with the speaker of this morning from the European Commission, which I first met last uh, year in November during a, um, a workshop in London. And uh, it's, it's very obvious that we have in Europe an excellent infrastructure. We do not need more infrastructure, but we need the vision where we want to go. And in particular, for those who are working in science and research, I think um, it's, it's very obvious uh, to, to us, uh, as yeah, we said in the introduction, I'm a physicist myself, um, we, we are very clear about um, the need for a change in the way how to publish, how to communicate um, research. And yeah, let's see if we will find a way um, where we can move forward. Um, first of all, I want to start um, with the slide. Um, this was uh, my experience 20 years ago when I was a student uh, and when I wanted to access um, any literature, any research literature. So a long time ago, um, or oh, 20 years are not so long, but anyway, and uh, within the last decade, uh, many, thing, uh, many things changed quickly. Uh, and so meanwhile, we are talking about open access, science 2.0, um, crowdsourcing, alt metrics, uh, repositories, and many other aspects uh, of social networks or networks in general. And the idea is how can we combine these ideas, these concepts which are on the table um, with uh, that what we have experienced in uh, communication of publishing and uh, science. Uh, let's see, when we are talking about the market of scientists or science, we are talking about more than, uh, of, uh, more than 20 million active scientists, both in uh, the STM, in the scientific technical medical disciplines, um, and in the humanities. So a lot of people working in these fields, and uh, they are using, or, uh, using for their publications more than 20,000 uh, scholarly journals in STM only, and uh, there are worldwide about 17,000 scholarly societies. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, of course it's a huge market, and so it's also a commercial market, and about 2,000 uh, commercial publisher, publishing companies uh, worldwide are coping with all these um, uh, publications. Um, to give you a, a current figure, about 4 million submissions last year in STM only, and about 50% of them get published, so uh, 1.8 million publications worldwide only in STM, so article publications in journals. That's quite a lot of uh, stuff, and uh, so, um, yeah, let's think about ideas, how can we use the, this incredible amount of knowledge uh, to make it more accessible um, and also uh, find ways how we can, as, a sign, as researchers, how we can um, start uh, discourse, that's what scientists should do, um, with these material. Um, so let's see, uh, yeah, what are the frustrations, the current frustrations uh, of researchers currently, you know it better than me, too long publication cycles, no open access, too expensive subscription fees, uh, and in particular, no transparency in the reviewing process, which is a very important or the most important quality assessment step in scholarly publishing. Um, so, and finally, there's no real interaction between uh, or among the, the researchers, uh, except conferences. Last week I attended a big physics conference in Berlin with more than 5,000 um, participants and uh, a lot of people, and they were uh, enthusiastically uh, discussing their recent findings uh, during the or oral presentations or at the posters uh, sessions. But then it was over after a few days and everybody uh, went home and so no way to communicate in that way. So could we do better meanwhile? 
I think we can. And uh, some time ago, The Economist um, summarized in a very nice review article the situation, how science goes wrong. So very interesting um, to read. What's the opportunity? Science 2.0 can fundamentally change the way how scholarly publishing works. Uh, for instance, immediate publication and worldwide open access. Why is open access so important? We all know it. Um, there are a lot of statistics, meanwhile, that we get more citations, more visibility, and also more discourse um, about those articles or publications which were made open access, uh, access and so on. Um, moreover, um, we do not need, um, as Andreas Degwitz said last year in the newspaper article in Tagesspiegel Berlin, Berlin um, uh, he said, as the head of the um, Humboldt University Library, he said, there's no need for um, journals as containers or silos anymore in the digital age. Very interesting aspect. Um, we need a more open and transparent peer review process, as for instance, the post-publication peer review pr uh, process. And we need, and I'm very keen to find out more about this uh, in half an hour from now in the next um, talk, about alternative article level metrics um, yeah, to find a replacement or to develop a replacement for that impact factor, which is still a measure for many of us for research, but everybody knows um, that it's, not, uh, it's quite not a good uh, measure for research or for researchers. Um, yeah, just to give you an example here um, from, from Tears, um, a new initiative or a journal, open access journal, uh, where such an alternative level that metrics has been introduced on the right side. Um, and finally, we need, as we just um, heard before the lunch break, we need more discourse, also public discourse, open discourse. Um, so uh, we need networks, we need interaction via networks or social networks, whatever. So here we see a recent block of me. So that's also a way to communicate and, and, and research. And uh, why do we, uh, yeah, we should, we should make more, um, seek for more options like this to um, use <coughs> short statements rather than lengthy articles to, to post our opinions about some aspects in research or about open access anyway. Um, yeah. Sounds strange, you may feel, but um, is it really utopia or not? Um, in fact, it's not. Uh, here I have listed only a few initiatives uh, which started within the last decade, most of them in the last few years, which tried at least to cope with some of these aspects I just summarized on the last slide. Uh, so, um, and finally, um, as said in the introduction, uh, we started ourselves also an initiative uh, which tries to cope with most of these aspects that science open, and I will give you a very short summary of that, what we did in a minute. So what's the basic idea of science open? Um, open science, of course, um, and we want to use the power of a professional network yeah, to openly aggregate, publish, exchange, collaborate, communicate, and discuss and evaluate scientific results. So that's a network idea, but not only focus to a dialogue, but also to all aspects we know from classical or traditional publishing in the last decades. Um, yeah, how does it uh, look? Oh, very greenish. Uh, so um, aggregation, that means I do not have to replicate something which has been published elsewhere or deposited, for instance, on the archive, the preprint server in physics. Uh, we use the existing repositories, that's the idea, or existing resources um, yeah, to simply bring together all content which is available. So no need to set up, as I said in the beginning, to set up a new infrastructure. We have the infrastructure. Every institute has a library. Every institute has server capacity. And we want to, yeah, to, want to motivate researchers to put their research on their local repository or on their local server Make, make it available open access. And then we have to find an environment to bring together all relevant research. For me, as a researcher, which is interested in a very specific niche area, uh, I, I have to find it. And that's the 
um, the difficult situation. Here, meanwhile, we have aggregated more than 1.5, meanwhile, more than 1.5 million open access articles, gold open access articles from more than 2.3 million authors um, in all areas, most of them in the um, um, in STM. And uh, yeah, moreover, we want to um, want to exchange, uh, enable the users to exchange ideas, exchange opinions about these articles which are there on the network. And uh, so we have a share option, we have messaging options, we have everything you know from other networks or other platforms um, to collaborate. So, and that's very important. For instance, I have my own uh, web space here, my private web space on the side where I can collaborate with my peers, my co-authors for my next publication. And for instance, uh, if I start to draft a new manuscript or a new publication or a new poster, I can invite co-authors uh, of my group privately uh, and share with them uh, yeah, my, my draft, ask for a new version, um, ask for feedback, and uh, that's one only one part of the story. Of course, there are uh, other um, initiatives or platforms which are providing this special service, but we are providing um, everything else too. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, for instance, for communication, it's very obvious that you need a profile. We do not need Mickey Mouse, but Alexander Grossman with, with a full profile, no uh, anonymous um, profile, so we use here the um, the ORCID or authentication for our users, uh, which makes perfect sense. And um, so it's very clear that only peers can contribute here to the discussion. Everybody can access the platform and see what's, uh, what's in it, but only peers authenticated via ORCID can access a discussion or can start um, reviewing a paper or publication from somebody else. Uh, finally, we want to use this also as a discussion and evaluation platform. As I said, it's very important to find new ways to, to manage the peer review process, which is, by the way, managed by the peers itself, by the community itself. We do not need a publishing house, which is uh, providing a special platform. Uh, we can use simply, uh, yeah, that platform or any other tool, since we are doing all the work, uh, yeah, ourselves anyway. We are authors of research publications, we are reviewers, so we make the quality assessment, and finally we are those who um, will read the papers and we pay for it. Um, oops, uh, anyway, I think that's not a sustainable model, and everybody knows it. Also the publisher, the classical publishing industry knows it, um, since I have been working for 12 years there um, too, and at Wiley and Springer and others, and they are also very keen to find out how can they contribute to these new developments, how can they um, yeah, find something sustainable for, for themselves, but it's very obvious they cannot start to aggregate uh, all open access papers worldwide. They have a lot of open paper, uh, access papers anyway, but actually, just to give you a fig figure, we have about 130, 150,000 open access papers in STM, which were published uh, last year from a statistics I, was, uh, I saw at the um, APU conference in, in Berlin in January. And I think uh, it's a long way still to go um, since the first figure was 1.8 million uh, publications in total in STM uh, last year. So we have to contribute a lot to make research more open. But uh, we need also a way then to, to make it uh, also accessible and uh, available. So we see here um, an example where we uh, introduced a post-publication peer review process and we are also providing some more information about mentions in social media. And as I said, uh, in a minute or so, we will learn more about alternative level metrics. Uh, the next speaker will tell us something about old metrics. And we are using here that old metric um, plugin for making it um, accessible. So we have not only the information, somebody cited the work, citing in the term of the digital age in terms of social networks. Oh, there was a tweet um, uh, about my recent publications. I do also know more about the person who cited that article, who mentioned that publication. So the second dimension, and we, we have also the third dimension. I can read what he or she said 
at complete variance to my findings, Alexander Grossman, blah, 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 that would be a bad citation. And so um, I can, as a reader, easily <laughs> click on it and access all information, all three dimensions. And that's what we need in the future also to get rid of that impact factor and also the way how the impact factor is still used for ev evaluation, which makes no sense at all. Um, here, just to give you a, a quick introduction into the feedback we got by users of our site. We started Science Open um, a year ago, and we published, meanwhile, about 100 um, papers and posters. Um, I will come back in a minute on that aspect of posters. And we see here the statistics. So um, I expected that uh, much less people will start um, providing that platform a full review of of, for, for any paper they have read. And so we were very happy that more people than we expected in the beginning accessed that site and also um, provided or submitted here a review, a rating here in STARS. Hmm? So you know it from, others, from other sites, but it's simply a way to display it in a very fancy way. But finally, as we just saw on the last slide, um, it's the same way how peer review works. Um, you have a full report. Uh, as a reviewer, you have to submit your criteria why that or this is good or average or poor. And so it's simply the same way, but it's an open evaluation. So everybody can also read recommendations of a reviewer. Oh, uh, maybe it would be nice if uh, somebody else will develop um, a certain way how for an experimental approach for that specific problem. Um, so everybody can read it now, not only the author or the editor of the journal. And so there's much more um, feedback created, which is accessible by much more people than in the present situation. Um, so finally, uh, some very recent highlights. Uh, as I said, the platform is aggregating open access content. The goal is to aggregate all open access content, gold open access content, which is currently available. Um, and it's a nice idea to, to think about a collection or to um, combining. Uh, now, these articles, which are of relevance for me, I'm working in a specific field in physics, let's say in quantum computing. I'm interested only in a very narrow niche of physics, quantum computing. And I am now, I can decide now that I want to go um, and pick these articles from the collection or from the aggregation. Uh, out of the 1.5 million articles and bring them together in a collection of relevant papers which I feel which are relevant, relevant for my community. So it's an open collection and uh, it's very flexible, it's dynamic, it's maybe it's a journal 3.0 or 2.0 or whatever. There is no, um, yeah, no other way how to describe it as a collection. And here we have some examples. You can start a collection in the perspectives or from the perspective of an institution. So here, the Paul Drude Institute put all um, articles they have published open access last year in that collection. We have also examples on the site where um, an editor decided to go, as I said in the beginning, in a very specific uh, niche area of his uh, scientific uh, expertise to collect papers from that aspect. You can, you can. You have uh, several criteria how you can set up such a collection. Um, and it's, which, which is very important, if you're starting to search and search and search again, you know it from Google, you can also um, save your search um, to make sure that you got an alert. Oh, there's a new paper last day, uh, from last day or so, last week, uh, on quantum computing. And um, now I can save not only one search, many searches, and uh, I got the feedback then automatically from the system. And finally, as I said um, a minute ago, we are also offering um, ways to publish uh, any research, not only as an article, but also posters, but also negative results. Everything which is of importance to um, being communicated among scientists. And as I said last week, I was attending that big physics conference in Berlin, and uh, we offered the posted publication uh, for two uh, divisions of that conference. And they were, as they wrote, enthusiastic about that opportunity. In particular, the younger scientists, uh, which have had to wait then for, for an opportunity to publish these results they are presenting, they have been presenting as a poster, as a full article. They can now take the PDF um, with the metadata, the same metadata as for any other article, and then, um, yeah, they receive a DOI. The work becomes citable. Uh, it's indexed via Google Scholar, and 
they said, wow, that's really great, that's fantastic. Um, here, where, where can we submit that poster? And uh, yeah, so obviously it works. And it's only an example, so I'm a, an experimental physicist, and that's why we are trying dynamically <laughs> to de develop also new, uh, uh, yeah, new ways, new concepts, and hopefully we'll, we will get also some feedback from you um, to, um, yeah, how to uh, continue that effort. Finally, I want to summarize, um, since we, we were talking about future trends and perspectives of scholarly publishing, um, what can we summarize or what have we learned now? Um, we say, okay, uh, obviously journals um, were a very good tool to, um, in the printed age to uh, disseminate knowledge, but in the digital age it would be nice to have platforms or mega journals um, that's one idea, no silos anymore. Um, moreover, um, we, are, we all agree that the impact factor, impact factor is not a good way to, um, to evaluate research, so we need article level metrics or something else, more information. We need open data. We need also new uh, ways to communicate our research, not only uh, articles, um, we need living documents as Max Planck um, uh, tried with the, um, or started with the living review concept. We need a living um, document, a versioning of research results, so to represent also the activity in that specific um, field of research in the digital form, open evaluation, post-publication peer review would be one concept. Um, we need also an acknowledgement of the peers. That's why our um, reports or review reports um, got credited by a DUI, so they are also citable. Uh, and finally, um, of course, we need open access. Uh, and uh, most importantly, um, we have to think about the community, the peers. Um, yeah, what do authors prefer? Do, do they still prefer prestigious and highly ranked journals? to publish, or do we find an alternative um, way how they could um, think in the future? And uh, that's very interesting, uh, interesting to discuss this specific um, issue with the, um, the audience uh, and also with you. And I have no, um, no clear trend so far discovered um, from that what I got as a feedback. So before I finish, I want to thank also our partners um, and uh, I thank you. Uh, very much, uh, yeah. Good. Oops. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Grossman. Are there any questions? Be brave after the lunch. Thank you very much for the um, interesting talk. How, how would you position Science Open uh, in comparison to Mendeley? That's a very good question. And um, I think um, Mendeley was starting with a concept also I just described as a workspace, a platform where you could privately share um, drafts or whatever with other researchers, with your peers, and uh, that's, that was also one reason. It's a service um, for, for researchers, and that was also, I think, the very reason why Elsevier acquired Mendeley um, some time ago, uh, since also publishers have recognized that they have to provide more services to uh, yeah, their customers, which are here the researchers, not the librarians. And I think that's, um, that's a trend which is also continuing since also other publishers, also Springer, also are, are very keen to find out where they can also join new initiatives to provide more services rather than uh, staying in the mood of uh, a copyright owner uh, only. Yeah. More questions? Thank you. Uh, Gilles Dubochet from Science Europe. I was wondering about how you use uh, the reviews that are provided by your users. You showed us how you show them as next to the actual article, mm -hmm. but do you use them beyond that to uh, extract information about networks of researchers, how researchers read and use uh, um, uh, articles? Mm -hmm. Do you use reviews to help researchers mm -hmm. find other articles that might be relevant to them? Mm -hmm. 
that's a good um, that's a good idea. Uh, as I just said, we introduced that uh, concept um, yeah, half a year ago, uh, and um, the next step would be, of course, exactly um, go, would, would go in that direction as you described. We want to use the all the data, all the information we have, also the reviews, also the um, the way how other peers, maybe in my specific area of expertise, um, are looking to specific articles or commenting on articles, and we want to combine that um, information to give uh, yeah, support to other users from the same field. So to give them uh, some indication, oh, you should also read that article because some of your peers commented or reviewed that specific article. And of course, we need more usage. In the very beginning, it makes not, uh, not so much sense. We have a lot of data aggregated, but uh, we have to start also to collect users and usage. And if you have enough usage, you have also enough um, yeah, information about the traffic, um, the activities, the behavior of the user users. And uh, we are not going to sell it as uh, maybe competitors uh, to um, ad company, uh, advertisement companies. We are using this information then. Uh, that's the plan for the second half of this year. We use this information then to uh, bring more qualified information, more specific information to the user. And I think that's exactly um, the need. Uh, so many articles, 1.8 article, a million articles per year in STM only, no chance for a researcher um, to get any, inf uh, yeah, get track of that, all, uh, of all these publications. So I need some help. And in the past time, in the printed age, the help was the journal, journal A, journal B. But that's not uh, the 21st century anymore. We have more, um, yeah, more examples, more techniques to, to cope with this uh, idea. Mm -hmm.